Hi everyone, Tom here, and in this video I want to introduce you the military special forces of Germany from the Second World War through the Cold War period until the present days. So you will find here an overview about the Brandenburgers, the Farmschirmjäger Battalion Willi Zenger, the Fernspeich companies, and of course the Kommando Spezialkräfte. If you want to know more about these units, check the sources down in the description. So the first unit I want to introduce you is the Special Forces unit of the World War II Germany. Originally the unit was formed by and operated as an extension of the military's intelligence organ, the Abwehr, so the German military intelligence. Members of this unit took part in sizing operationally important targets by infiltration or they sabotaged key objects. Members were foreign German nationals who had lived abroad and were professionals in foreign languages as well as being familiar with the way of life in the area of operation. Originally the unit was called Deutsche Company, so German company, then later Bauchler Company 800, and then again on 10th January 1940 they changed the name and the unit was called Bauchler Battalion zur besondere Verwendung 800, so 800 Special Duties Construction and Training Battalion. But it later was uh, more widely known as the Brandenburgers, stemmed from the name of the unit's first permanent quarters in the German Brandenburger barracks. The first members were Volksdeutsches or ethnic Germans. They volunteered or were specifically recruited for their language skills. As a rule, these men had not served at all or not in the Wehrmacht and were trained only beef briefly by the Abwehr, so the German military intelligence. They were therefore not soldiers themselves, but civilians, although they were led by German officers. This uh, changed only after the Polish campaign, when the members of the newly established commando group received the status of Wehrmacht members. The first volunteers of the Bauchler company were Silesian and Sudeten Germans. With the expansion of the theaters of war, Germans were recruited from other regions, such as the Baltic states, the Balkans or South Africa. As news of this new elite unit in the Wehrmacht spread, soldiers from regular army reported as well. When choosing recruits, more attention was devoted to language skills and reliability. Uh, the special training was then made in the training school of the Abwehr near Brandenburg on the Havel. Since the need for linguistic commando soldiers could no longer be met with the increasing extent of the special unit, it was necessary to set up so-called combat interpreters from local people, mostly prisoners of war, from minorities of the country of assignment. Combat interpreters were native speakers from the area of operation who had mostly undergone military training in their home countries and were in part highly qualified. In operations behind enemy lines, they had the task to provide for the camouflage of the task force when hitting military police or enemy checkpoints. Since in such situations no consultation between the combat interpreter and the German unit leader was possible, the interpreters often had a great responsibility for the whole task force. Especially on the Eastern Front, was the number of combat interpreters with increasing war duration often larger than the number of the actual German commandos. Commando missions in World War II were limited in time and carried out by small troops in the enemy's territory. Among the commandos were on the one hand key missions, key stands for combat, for securing operationally and economically important objects 
such as bridges or industrial plants, and S missions. S stands for sabotage, for example, destroying an object. Also essential were the I missions. I stands for insurrection, whose goal was to support oppositional movements in the enemy's territory. As a rule, the target object was approached in half, full, or mixed camouflage. In the half camouflage, enemy uniforms or civilian clothes were worn on the German uniform when approaching the object. This camouflage was dropped before the actual fight. Full camouflage was used when a complete enemy uniform was also worn during the combat. And in a mixed camouflage, only some of the, of some of the soldiers appeared in enemy uniforms, while the larger part of the unit wore German uniform and acted as prisoners when escorted by the enemy lines. Weapons and ammunition were hid under their uniforms. For steel's purposes, enemy weapons and vehicles were also used. The first large-scale operation took place in the context of the Western Campaign. On the night of May 9th to 10th, 1940, commandos of the Barler Bauchler Battalion zu Besondene Verwendung 800 took strategically important bridges in Belgium, at Genep, and in the Netherlands. On May 27th, another subunit took the sea locks and road bridges uh, in Belgium and prevented with the fact that the German advance as early as 1914 held back by planned flooding. During the Operation Marita, the attack of Yugoslavia and Greece, the 2nd Battalion of the regiment captured the operationally imported bridge over the Vardar and the Iron Gate on April 4, 1941. Other operations to secure important objects took place in 1941 in the opening phase of uh, Operation Barbarossa, so the attack on the Soviet Union. One of the most famous uh, was the capture of the bridges at Dunaburg on June 28, 1941, during which members of the 8th Company crossed the bridge on Soviet booty tracks surprised the guards and then held this position for two hours against Soviet counterattacks. Here fell the company commander, Lieutenant Hans Wolfram Knack, who posthumously promoted to captain and uh, uh, awarded with the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. In the autumn of 1942, members of the unit, disguised as NKVD officers, caused confusion behind the lines of the Red Army in the area of Maikop in the Caucasus. From June 1942 to February 1943 were also on the theater of the War of North Africa commando operations against the Allied supply lines in Egypt, Libya and Tunisia performed. At the turn of the year 1942 to 1943, rethinking of special uh, uh, operations took place for various reasons. Due to the situation on the fronts and to compensate for larger personal losses, the unit therefore increasingly had to be used as a normal infantry unit. In September 1944 it was decided that special operation units were no longer necessary. Approximately 1,800 men were transferred to Otto Skorzeny's 502nd SS Jäger Battalion, operating as the new Special Forces Unit of Germany. The Brandenburg Division became a normal infantry division and transferred to the Eastern Front, where they were assigned to Panzerkorps Großdeutschland, along with the Großdeutschland Division. In late 1944, the division was equipped with a Panzer Regiment, and redesignated Panzergrenadier Division Brandenburg and returned to the front. The Brandenburgers were involved in heavy fighting near Memel until their withdrawal along with the Großdeutschland Division. The division was all but annihilated during the heavy fighting and only 800 men escaped. In May 1945, 
many Brandenburgers, highly skilled in evading detection, simply disappeared, others enlisted in the French Foreign Legion. The next unit I want to introduce you is the Farmschirmjäger Battalion Willi Zenger, so the Airborne Infantry Battalion Willi Zenger, which was the only airborne infantry formation of the East German National People's Army or the Nationale Volksarmee in German. It was formed in 1962. The battalion was based in Rügen Island between 1962 until 1982 and later near Potsdam from 1982 until 1990. It had a complement of approximately 500 men. According to some NATO experts, the East German Airborne Battalion was the best operational airborne unit in training and active service within the whole Soviet bloc. Its primary assignment was to com conduct commando operations against enemy military installations. Other assignments including destroying nuclear weapon carriers, enemy command centers and enemy supply lines. In 1960, four years after the founding of the East German Army, the first paratrooper unit was formed from the 5th Motorized Rifle Battalion, in German Motorschützen Battalion 5, and on February 28, 1962, it was renamed the 5th Paratrooper Battalion, Farmschirmjäger Battalion 5. In 1969, the battalion was named after Willy Zenger, an anti Nazi resistance fighter. On November 8, 1972, it was renamed again Farmschirmjäger Battalion 50 oder FJB 50. Under the direct command of the headquarters of the land forces based in Potsdam. In time of war, the battalion would be used as a commando strike unit to infiltrate and sabotage NATO command structures and supply routes. Paratroopers were to be employed to eliminate nuclear weapon carriers and command posts and occupy enemy uh, installations until their own forces have arrived. All the battalion's personnel were volunteers who had to pass many selective tests before being channeled for further training. Every year a few hundred young soldiers volunteered for a place in the unit, only 8 to 10 percent passed. Since this unit required a long-term commitment, the service period of a paratrooper was generally at least three years. Training took place in the unit in accordance with the requirements of the commando operations similar to the US Army Rangers and Special Forces. Training was rigorous as possible with physical combat and weapon drills to the point of the complete exhaustion of the most rigorous kind of athletic training. The training was tailored particularly for employment in enemy's rear area. It was intended to produce a brave, strong and independent thinking fighter. Special training include the following subjects. Daytime and nighttime combat training. Handling of explosive and incendiary devices. Mountain climbing, skiing, swimming and driving. Military physical training with 15 km runs and interval training. Forced marches while wearing protective masks and 100 km marches with a complete set of equipment. Close combat training, urban combat operations and marksmanship. The unit was modeled after the Soviet special purpose paratrooper units which were intended to be used for commando operations and for subversion and long-range reconnaissance missions. The basic structure of the battalion was five parachute companies, a signal company and a sapper company. In combat, the companies of the battalion were to be split up into five or six man teams to lower its operational profile. The next unit I want to introduce you is the special forces unit of the West German Army, the Fernspeck companies. Until the activation of the Kommando Spezialkräfte, so the Special Forces Command, 
in late 1996, the Army of West Germany and later Germany had three Fernspeich companies, Fernspeich Company 100, 200 and 300, with one being assigned to each army corps. Former German armies did not practice the concept of long-range reconnaissance. These companies served as long-range reconnaissance patrol role, sending small, heavily armed long-range reconnaissance teams that patrol deep in enemy-held territory. Germans studied the Finnish Army's World War II long-range patrol teams that conducted reconnaissance, sabotage and prisoner capture missions as far as 300 km deep in Soviet territory, surviving for days on carried supplies or weeks on parachute-dropped resupplies. Furthermore, they drew on the special skills of the German Gebirgskjäger, so mountain infantry, and Fallschirmjäger, parachute infantry, and the special forces of the Germans' NATO allies. The task of these companies was to gain information in the depth of the enemy space. At the same time, operationally important goals should be clarified, among other things, to enable them to be controlled by other forces. The company supported the special forces of the Bundeswehr. The soldiers of the company were capable of stationary and mobile use during the day and night, as well as for the documentation and evaluation of the information provided special education. The main mission of the company was last to carry out military evacuation operations from crisis areas. After the Bundeswehr reform in 1996, the Fernspeich Company 100 and 300 were dissolved and the Fernspeich Lehr Company 200 was preserved. This company consisted of four reconnaissance platoons and support units covering the technical aspects of intelligence gathering as well as analysis of the gathered data, two specialized medical squads and a specialized military intelligence platoon. The overall thanks among the unit was more than 220 troops. Today, it is known that members of the Fernspeich company carried out missions in Bosnia and Herzegovina during the Yugoslav War and later during Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. Additionally, members of the unit were shipped to the Democratic Republic of Congo in the year of 2006. In October 2011, the German Ministry of Defense announced that the Fernspeichler Company 200 will be deactivated and its elements integrated into the KSK by 2014. The Commando Spezialkräfte or Special Forces Command KSK is an elite Special Forces military unit composed of Special Operations soldiers selected from ranks of the German Bundeswehr and organized under the Rapid Forces Division. KSK has received many decorations and awards from NATO and the United States and its affiliates, and KSK operatives are frequently requested for joint anti-terror operations, notably in the Balkans and Middle East. During the war in Afghanistan, the KSK worked under the International Security Assistance Force, ISAF, the NATO-led security mission in Afghanistan. Command since 2005, carrying out numerous operations in the vicinity of the German deployment in Kabul, including a successful raid on an Al-Qaeda safe house for suicide bombers in October 2006. The KSK is a regular army unit at a brigade level and divided into two battalion-sized departments, the operational forces and the support forces. The operational forces uh, is a combat ready unit which is divided into four commando companies of approximately 100 men. The special commando company is normally staffed with veteran members taking on various supporting roles. Each of the four commando companies have five specialized platoons, each with a unique specialty and ability that can be adapted on both the terrain and the situation, depending on type of actions required. There are four commando squads in every platoon. 
each of these squads consists of four equally skilled members that have been handpicked from the German army into the platoon that best suits their abilities. Each squad member is specially trained as a weapon expert, medic, combat engineer or communicational expert. Additionally, some groups may contain other specialties such as heavy weapons,